Today, we're going to talk more about deontology, but a specific branch of deontology called intuitionism. Last time, we ended with a scenario involving a patient who wants to choose their own death, a tricky situation that puts you, as the doctor, in the middle of several different duties. Kantian deontology doesn't give us a clear course of action here. We're just meant to follow what reason tells us. W.D. Ross offers a solution, intuitionism. He argues that our intuitions, our off-the-cuff, emotion-driven responses to ethical situations, are an important data set for ethical decision-making. Not the only important data, of course, but an important starting place for our actions. Gut responses matter because they help us to sort through moments like our euthanasia thought experiment when we face conflicting duties. Ross argues that our intuitions tell us about duties that are prima facie, or first blush. As a side note, there are a lot of different ways to pronounce this term. Luckily, all of the Romans are dead, so they can't really correct us. Here is a list of some of these possible prima facie duties. Keep in mind, these are not the only prima facie duties, and Ross is not convinced that they have to be in this order. But, he says, when we find ourselves in a sticky situation where we are pulled in many different directions by different duties, it's likely that our gut will tell us which one of these matters most. Let's go back to our euthanasia scenario. Maybe your first instinct is that, as a doctor, you're obligated not to harm other people, and euthanasia sounds like harm. That would be the prima facie duty of non-maleficence. Maybe you think that, as a doctor, you took the Hippocratic Oath, and to violate that would be to let yourself as a doctor and all of your fellow doctors down. That might be the prima facie duty of fidelity. But maybe you think that the patient's choice matters most, and that you should treat all your patients as rational beings who can make their own choices. That would be the prima facie duty of justice. And this, Ross argues, is how most people actually operate in the real world. Most of us don't sit down and do mathematical calculations like Bentham, or think about what capital R reason would indicate through symbolic first-order logic like Kant. Most of us, he says, just go with our gut. Imagine you agreed to meet your sister for coffee at 3 p.m. Just before you go, your friend asks you to drive her to drop off cookies for her sick grandmother. What does your gut tell you? Maybe your promise to your sister matters most. Maybe the degree to which that promise matters depends on if your sister lives in the same town, or if she drove a few hours to see you. Maybe helping your friend matters more. Maybe helping your friend matters a lot more if this might be the last time she sees her grandmother. All these factors will change our intuitions, and our intuitions offer a strong starting point to figure out which of these duties should take precedence. To decide on what Ross calls your actual duty, you consider which of these duties has the most stringency, or how much a particular duty obligates you. Unfortunately, Ross says, there are no general rules for us to decide this. No matter what you do, when we do good to one person, we probably cause harm to someone else. And that is why our intuitions matter. Mathematical calculation like the utilitarians ask us to do will not help us to decide, because quite probably all of our choices will cause harm. Strict deontology won't help either, because these are all duties and they all matter. So we turn to our first blush, our gut our instinct. This doesn't mean we should just follow our first thoughts, though. Ross says that when we have sufficient mental maturity and have given sufficient attention to the proposition, then the actual duty stringency will be as evident as a mathematical axiom. While our actual duties may shift from situation to situation, and our intuitions may differ from person to person, there are certainly more stringent duties and more sound intuitions. We're meant to refine our minds and intuitions, then, so that we can cultivate the best possible intuitions and interpret them to the most rigorous rationality. How do we cultivate these right intuitions? Is their theory all about practice and developing inner traits? Why, yes. Yes, there is. And that will be the subject of our next video.